John Vassar. This is the John Vassar Show. Charles Pellegrino, the book is To Hell and Back, and we're describing events that have not happened again. Hiroshima and Nagasaki stand out in recorded history as unique, and the phenomenon we're describing is very close to what we could speculate will happen, could happen, in the event of another nuclear attack on a large population. I mention because we're in the 21st century and there are no nuclear weapons guarantees. So, why we're being so careful and leaving out the ghoulish stuff, that's not, it's in the book, you're welcome to, to, to check it, it's all documented, and we're following the doctors as they're saving people's lives, but they're also coming up against something called disease X. They don't know what it is. Now, there's a phenomenon here. Dr. Nagai is also at the Urakami Medical Center. He has cancer. He's dying. But you say he goes into remission. Why? Right. He's been given about, <clears throat> excuse me, maybe about three months to live is what he's expecting. He was actually spending much of his time in a sick bed at the hospital. And what radiation affects is it uh, m usually it's most effective, uh, most destructive on cells that are rapidly dividing. So these can be the cells of your stomach, the cells in your bone marrow, and cancer cells have that quality of being rapidly dividing. And it actually, as other people around Dr. Nagai started getting sicker and sicker, he was one of the few people who started getting more and more strength. Actually, as sick as he was, he started getting better. But he doesn't recognize disease X. They don't know what it is. They don't understand radiation sickness. So he starts driving the nurses to continue to work, and they start uh, sagging around him. They are feeling the effects of radiation on their intestines and their blood. Right. Those nurses and doctors and students who had been near the outside, outer part of the building, even though they were shock cocooned at one and a half kilometers or less, they were exposed to very close to a lethal dose of radiation. We're going to follow Sweeney. Instantly. We're going to follow Sweeney and Boxcar back because the, uh, the American side of this has several more days to puzzle out what, what, and when Japan will surrender. But before we follow Boxcar, a detail about several of the double survivors. Miramoto is the kite maker. He was 2.5 kilometers from the hypo center at home when the moment zero hit. Dai, his friend, he was 3.7 kilometers from the hypo center when it hit. And Akira, their friend, they, he, I do not have the distance. Now, each of them survived for different phenomenon. But they knew that the flash was the warning to go down, to find right. cover. They knew that. And Miramoto is talking to his wife. He's saying, if the Pika strikes, go down. And then he saw a blue flash. Right, exactly what he saw. And he was in his kite shop. He threw his wife and his child down into a little storage room and dove in on top of her. And during those few seconds, the entire building was lifted off the ground above him, dropped down the block on top of another building. And when he came out, there was still a teapot still s sitting on its stove. They were in a spot between the firestorm and the blast and the radiation so they were in a sweet spot, between, right. though they were 2.5 kilometers. They were shadow-shielded and shock cocooned. Uh, Dai was telling his family, duck and cover if you hear a B-SAN diving, a bomber B-29. Right. He heard it, and they went down. Right. There's his one son was over in a garden in a Buddhist shrine. The one daughter was a bit bored with him telling this story over and over. And his wife began to run in the wrong direction. He pulled her down to the ground with him, and somehow they were all okay. They were just, uh, again, shadow shielded by a mountain. And all they really had to worry about was all these strange pieces of cars and things falling out of the sky. Sweeney on boxcar. They're flying back to Okinawa, Tinian. They go to, they get to Okinawa or do they make it all the way to Tinian? They get all, they get to Okinawa no, okay, just which barely. Is closer, about 350 miles from Nagasaki. He's playing games with fuel and RPMs, and he's coming in over Okinawa, screaming, Mayday, Mayday. They fire all the flares from the B-29. Why doesn't the field recognize them? Is it a secret? Are they not allowed to say what they are? 
Uh, they're not allowed to say what they are, but someone there were so many planes flying around, someone in the control tower was probably too tired, didn't see the flares that went out saying, warning, we're coming in hard, we're running out of fuel. And finally, to make sure they saw, he said, injured aboard, plane on fire, and Green everything and red, else. All the flares. Every, right, right. every flare they had, and then finally someone started clearing the other planes out of the way. He lands on one engine, and he can't stop the aircraft. Is that when they run right to the cliff? Uh, not to the cliff, but they actually they had a very rough landing and uh, with just trying to balance out with one engine left and dying when they landed. It was really... Uh, <laughs> I mean, within a hair's breadth. And again, how he milked more distance out of this plane that was running out of fuel was using Paul Tibbetts' mathematics. Right. Descending. I call Climbing it the, down the, the staircase. staircase right. Accelerating From, a little bit. Gliding. Accelerating. He made it back, but Sweeney's a haunted man. He had a conversation with the priest in between uh, that did not relieve Sweeney of the doubts that he had. He believed they'd done the right thing, that he'd followed orders, but he, he, he took this burden on himself, and he will go back to the Hypo Center within weeks. Yes. He'll be at the Hypo Center, and he'll see the destruction up close, which they couldn't do before they dropped the bomb. He lived a, a long and a distinguished life. Did he write about his doubts, about the conversations with the priest? He uh, wrote about going to see the priest. It was through the family of a uh, Hiroshima family that I was directed toward the story of the priest himself. Oh, I see. And that's how we get more of the priest's side of the conversation. The said- he wrote a little about his side and some of the things that the priest had said, but not the terrible guilt that the priest had carried. Father George says, I bless the right. blue in the plane. Yes. Yes. Okay. The book is To Helen Back. The Last Train from Hiroshima, Charles Pellegrino. When we come back, more survivors and more disease X. I'm John Batchelor. This is The John Batchelor Show.